as a solicitor. So, can I just ask you your thoughts on that? Yeah, so at this point, no uh, councilperson has approached me asking, or that I'm aware of, is the solicitor's office asking for a formal review to determine whether or not there's any preemption issues, whether or not there's any financial flow issues in answering the question, whether or not we are actually in a position to compel compliance with a fee structure. So, as to any of those things, I mean, just off the top of my head, I do have concerns about whether or not this would impact interstate commerce, and that's of course out of the jurisdiction of the city council, who actually owns the port, I understand. It's a guy named Steve, I think, who actually, yeah, <laughs> somebody named Steve owns the port, um, and whether or not the regulation of that would actually come through whatever contract might exist. So there's a, a multitude of different venues for this to happen, um, but at this point, no, no one's actually asked for formal review from my office, so we have nothing at this point. Okay, well, I do think that it's a serious risk. Councilman Narducci? <laughs> Regardless of what it, anything happens down there, like the chief would say, this will come back to the city of Providence. Um, as far as uh, mandating that they pay for the uh, details, how do we do it with uh, like National Grid and then you know, companies like that that pay for details? We don't mandate that they pay for it, correct? That's they know when they hire the detail, they have to pay. Well, there's a state law that addresses that type of uh, traffic enforcement on the roadside. Uh, not quite sure as it pertains to maritime, uh, the same type of commitment. Madam Chair. Yes, Councilman. But there are mandates in the city, uh, the nighttime economy, for instance, do you mandate the problems to this detail of many of the venues for our products? We mandate that once we get in trouble with the Board of Licenses, uh, so there are mandates already codified in local law. Is that so, yes, that, so the state, uh, state statutes that control licensing right. about, allows grants authority to our licensing board to require certain safety precautions. Uh, same for streets and roads and there are cutouts and things like that. Uh, maritime commerce law is a really different field which I have okay. personal okay. experience with. So, Chief, I just, I'm looking at this powers and duties. The powers and duties of the harbor, harbor master shall include, but are not limited to, administering and enforcing the harbor management plan. So, does the plan speak about security? Does it require the detail? So, we, over the years, the bonds always made this. And then they're not routine weekly meetings, they may be quarterly. So, in between their large meetings, the company hired a consultant to come up with this risk assessment, risk mitigation plan, submitted it to the company. They uh, showed it for a view to the Coast Guard who signed off on it. We had no input. Okay. Councilman Taylor. <clears throat> Just quickly, I think uh, Councilman Salvatore has a good idea. Why couldn't we put in there that any LPG or LNG tanker that comes in has to pay for their detail? That way it doesn't inter interrupt with the Commerce or anything with other ships that are coming in. Like when ships coming in with fish, we don't have to have a detail. But if they're coming in with L LPG or LNG, it's spelled out that they're responsible for pay for detail for the safety of support. Councilman Sanderson? I'm sure I have a question for the Colonel. In Boston, does the Harbor Master have the authority to set the, the level or the amount of, of the detail that's required for that set delivery? No, that, that again would be the Coast Guard as well. The Coast Guard. However, you know, I can tell you the Port of Boston, the Port of New York, they have a big footprint. We have great intelligence communication with the FBI, Department of Homeland Security for threats and threat levels. Uh, and don't think for a second that bad guys don't pay attention to where there is a big presence and where there is no presence and where they have an opportunity. Uh, so, you know, we do a lot surrounding counterterrorism, just like New York, Boston. But I think it's important to have a presence, a local, in this case, capital city, at least presence, when there's a large shipment of LNG or LPG. And then as far as the cost factor, we, we can work that out as how that is the language. So, Chief, is it fair to say that you would like to see us pass this, that it would be a matter of safety? I strongly support this ordinance change. Okay. Any other questions? Councilman uh, Uh LPG and LNG, the only uh, delivery that we feel that we should have security there for? Uh, are there any other deliveries that 
perhaps will require uh, the presence of private police. What, what else do we have coming in the court that could probably require? Historically, those have not been this concerns. So, so, the the concerns. concerns. So, so the police detail would just be for the LNG and LPG. Correct. And I agree with you, Chief. I think we, we should move quickly on this. Uh, we should not go one more day. Uh, and also to make sure, like my colleague Sarafola says, that um, we should make sure that taxpayers are not the ones paying for this. It should be positive delivery for the cost. I feel that the company will incorporate that in the WWE. I think we're all in agreement on that one. So, uh, can I ask the solicitors, the language that is stated here, request a full police detail to be present for the duration, should we say police detail uh, paid for by the company uh, making the delivery? Should we edit it right here? So if you do that, it would have, it would indicate where the thought of the cost should be. I just don't know how forceful it would be looking at whether or not the city has the, uh, the ability or the power and authority to give back interstate commerce in that way. I understand that by MARSEC, MARSEC, I believe, is federal safety standard. Right. Yeah, and it seems like that MARSEC standard is probably the impact of however maritime law regulates the Coast Guard's relationship with the localities for developing safety and security plans and executing that plan. And so whether or not the city council, dependent the federal government, can, I, I just don't know if that okay. Sorry. So <laughs> I'll go this. So when I started this conversation, we talked about a detail. The detail is, is it's meant that whoever is requesting the service pays for the detail. Is that correct? Correct. So um, I think we, we're okay with that. And I'm getting a sense uh, the committee wants to pass this. Can I just finish, Councilman, please? Um, I'm getting a sense that the committee, the committee here wants to pass it. The chief has asked us to, to move forward with it. Um, I do think it's important. I'm thinking that the way to go is to um, uh, pass it, make a motion to pass this with a recommendation that the solicitor, before it is heard, can the council review it to make sure that there are no um, challenges that we're not seeing right now. But I think out of an abundance of, of caution, that makes sense. But I do get a, a sense of urgency on this. Councilman, is there something that you'd like to add to that? Yeah, because you know, I'm hearing about the taxpayers being for it. I'm a taxpayer. And you know what? If I was told I had to pay as a taxpayer a certain percentage to secure the port, I'd have no problem with that. Rather than have an unsecured port, that God forbid, if something was to happen, five to eight mile radius of our taxpayers could be gone. You know? and, and I'm sure I want to Thank you. And I'm sure Councilman that if it came to that point that we we'll all agree that if we came to that cost then we could carry that we will. But it's a matter of negotiating it it's uh, it should be up to them to pay it to cover the cost. Okay, so Thank you very much. Um, may I have a motion? Yes. That motion to pass this um, as uh, it appears before us with a request that the solicitor's office um, reviews the language and advises us of any concerns they might have before we vote on it uh, in front of the uh, council. Motion made by Harrison Narducci and Castillo. Uh, seconded by Miller. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Madam Thank Madam. you, Councilman Taylor. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you kindly read item two?